Shufti Pro, True Identity Builds Trust. Again with another webinar. Also want to remind you uh, that if you want to listen to our previous webinars, just subscribe to our channel. You may find the link pinned in the chat section. Uh, this webinar is a special one. We are very excited to have with us Konstantin Voiko, the CEO of Just Coded, a software company building products for the crowdfunding industry. Um, their product Lender Kit is a flexible crowdfunding software uh, which has already helped lots of businesses all over the world launch their own crowdfunding platforms. So hi Konstantin and how are you doing? Hi Anna, um, nice to see you. Thanks for having me here. Let's make it productive. Sure, sure. Um, basically, this webinar resolves around crowdfunding and we will be discussing the industry in particular and how it requires the use of efficient KYC as well as AML services as there are some gaps uh, and that potentially may allow frauds or PEPs to exploit this industry. I uh, also want to tell everyone that we will be taking live questions, so if there is something you'd like to ask, please type the questions in the chat box. Uh, we will answer them in the end of the session. Uh, Alright, so uh, let me share with you the agenda of today's discussion. We will be talking about the current state of crowdfunding industry, about how crowdfunding platforms comply with rules. Uh, we will be speaking about KYC in crowdfunding and how it works, threats and challenges in the industry. And after all, we will speak about the um, KYC providers uh, within this industry. Um, okay, so let's begin. Um, now every region, as you know, have their own specific regulations for the crowdfunding industry. So for the USA, for the EU, for I mean, a, for all these regions, they all have separate preferences regarding the industry. And in the US, uh, it's SEC or the Securities Exchange Commission of the US have uh, recently updated their regulations as well. So uh, for us to understand those regulations, we must at first understand how the industry itself actually operates. Uh, which basically brings me to my first question to you, Konstantin. Um, if you were to describe crowdfunding, how would it be for a startup enthusiast, for example, who might be listening to us right now? How would you describe the entire thing? Okay, so that's a question which uh, one alone can take the whole webinar, <laughs> uh, of course, so, but I'll try to keep it uh, fairly short. So, first of all, there are like many types of crowdfunding uh, and people when they hear crowdfunding they usually think about something like kickstarter or indiegogo uh, basically websites where you can post uh, create a campaign about your product maybe future product uh, about uh, some course uh, it could be even a movie or uh, supporting somebody of the disaster or whatever uh, and then people all over the world, they can contribute to your campaign uh, with some money starting from, you know, maybe one dollar. And um, there is also some uh, funding target, uh, which if, if it is reached, then uh, the campaign is considered successful and the money goes to uh, the fundraiser. But uh, in some cases, it's purely donation, so people just donate their money and contribute them to, to a product or to a company. Uh, in other cases, it's what we call reward-based uh, crowdfunding. It means mm -hmm. that in exchange to their donation, uh, people get some something in return. Usually, it's either a um, sample of the product or maybe the future product. So let's say you are trying to create some very innovative device uh, and in order to actually build it you need uh, to to get some funding uh, so you you get that funding with crowdfunding and then uh, when you actually release the product those people who support it they receive uh, the product first before everyone else else can try it uh, but that's that's very kind of basic and maybe the, the most basic uh, version of crowdfunding where it's uh, one way so you only uh, investors or not really investors but uh, supporters they uh, send money to fundraiser mm -hmm. uh, and 
more sophisticated way of you know in of uh, crowdfunding which uh, is actually what we call crowd investing is uh, two way so you, you don't just support somebody but you also invest money and expect some return uh, in some cases it's uh, debt based so you put your money in and then you get your money back with some interest after a set term for well, let's say mm -hmm. 12 months in other cases it's equity so you don't expect to get the exact money back but you get shares in the company uh, and that's what actually in the us it's called regulation crowdfunding uh, it's equity crowdfunding for startups and uh, the main example would be in the us it's start engine for example in uh, in the uk uh, it's cedar you might might have heard of or crowdcube they are very similar uh, they even were going to merge at some point but uh, that didn't happen yeah. Uh, so yeah so that's uh, the crowdfunding which is uh, more about investing rather than just uh, supporting somebody um, but at the same time it's not purely about uh, money usually because uh, there are like other ways to put your money in get some return uh, either with bonds or more traditional assets like stock uh, but the, the uh, motivation for people to invest in crowdfunding it's more emotional so you you know, you know what uh, kind of company you support if it resonates with your beliefs uh, how does it make you feel uh, and so forth so it's but in the, in the same time it becomes kind of new asset class Oh, okay. So that's okay, that's kind so... of kind of very 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 short introduction to yeah to, yeah. To the but but this is very it's a very good explanation I would say. And I also wanted to ask something you know more numbers related. Uh, you know there is some changes in the industry. So starting with the March fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty one, um, there is a change in the uh, amount offering. So it's like uh, five million dollars in a twelve month period. So. Uh, do you believe that this regulation opens new doors for money laundering or um, how are the regulations planning to develop investor verification criteria for uh, crowdfunding in, in, in this regard? Uh, yeah, I believe you're talking about the US specifically where um, yeah. the limit uh, has been increased from 1 million to 5 million recently. Uh, well, I think that it doesn't really create like new doors it's just makes the existing doors a bit little bit wider so if you if you have a way of laundering money uh right now with one well not right now but if you had had this way before with one million with five million it's just five times faster in a okay. way and uh, yeah and i also wanted to ask uh, you the same question in a way um uh, like does it make any difference from kyc perspective uh, to do identity checks and uh, AML checks uh, with one million limit and with five. Yeah, well, my, my answer would be pretty much similar to yours. Pretty much uh, the KYC in itself is not really impacted by the changes in this limit. Uh, but of course, uh, it's mostly concerned with the checking if the person has been uh, on the red list or not. However, from the anti-money laundering perspective, uh, there might be some slight changes uh mostly you know in in the way we are performing enhanced due diligence and more detailed ground checks so in simple okay. terms there is no change in requirements for aim and kyc uh but there is more you know uh actions in due diligence uh checking for for investors uh but okay so i guess it's yeah, go, on. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to comment that it's probably a, not really a change for us technology companies, but more for lawyers and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People. And also very important to remember, it's only about the U.S. So this, as, as it's regulated in the U.S. in this way right now. All right. Uh, moving forward, um, another question that I have to you, and I'm sure a lot of other people have the same question in their head. Um, how does one just apply for crowdfunding? How does this system work? Can you share with us a bit more about that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, it's simple on one hand, but not so simple when it comes to details. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of the, all of those 
first of all, it, it, it actually depends on uh, what kind of platform you apply to. Uh, and uh, before even applying, you probably, if I was somebody fundraising, uh, I would uh, carefully choose which website, which platform to go. Uh, because there are general uh, platforms like, again, Cedros, Crowdcube, or Start Engine, or whatever, where every startup can apply. Uh, but there are very niche and specialist ones. Uh, so let's say you have a green energy startup, then it probably it makes sense to find uh, a platform which is specialized in this green energy sector. And it might be uh, more productive and maybe more optimal uh, to apply there. Uh, then what comes next after you selected your platform? Uh, again, every platform has their own way of onboarding uh, fundraisers as well as investors, actually. Uh, but uh, in any case, you first of all, you have to apply uh, for the platform. They have usually certain due diligence process. It could be automated, it could be manual. Uh, I think in most cases, it's still uh, at least half manual because uh, they, they have to make sure that the opportunities uh, they present on the platforms is a valid opportunity and uh, there are no Mm, at least uh, they manage some all the risks uh, and uh, yes obviously uh, AML policy uh, should have an AML checks uh, should be uh, applied at this stage uh, either manually or automatically and uh, I guess I guess that's pretty much it but what, what I was uh, talking yeah sorry uh, better automatically <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, what I was trying to say earlier about uh, of simple and not simple, uh, it's only first step. And then when you create your actual campaign, you have to market it and you have to design it in the first of all in a way which uh, is appealing to potential investors. Uh, because as I said earlier, it's pretty much emotional investment. So mm -hmm. people should build some, you should build some trust with uh, people who potentially can invest in, in the offering or in your company or in your uh, project, whatever you have you have there. Yep, yep, that, that makes sense, that makes sense. Um, and also we are, I, I feel that we are, you know, slightly going towards the regulation question. So um, in, in this regard, how, do, how important do you think it is to have the crowdfunding as an industry regulated and um, on that note I would like to also understand how secure crowdfunding platforms generally are uh, like we've heard it is in the past about the idea of this so uh, what are the threats that the industry faces from this point of view mm -hmm. uh, okay well when we talk about security I think uh, it's two-sided in a way uh, first of all, there is uh, security from IT perspective, like how secure the platform is in terms of data management, uh, user information and so forth. Uh, and, and that pretty much comes to platform technology provider or in-house in in development team. Like, uh, do they follow certain uh, protocols uh, for security? Do they have uh, enough testing, penetration testing and so forth? Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, what you mentioned about idea thieves, um, I, I guess you're talking about uh, somebody seeing something on your uh, new campaign and doing, trying to do the same. Mm -hmm. um, if, if that's the case, and I guess uh, the fundraisers, you, you, you always have different options, not just funding, but the traditional ways of financing. If your idea is, uh, so sensitive that you can't disclose like anything about it, then I guess crowdfunding is just not the right choice because uh, it's probably better to go to a uh, venture capital fund or angel investors, uh, sign an NDA with them and, and then yeah. present the idea. Uh, because crowdfunding is more a public way to get funds and uh, you need to market it, you need to present yourself and show that your idea is uh, credible and mm -hmm. investable enough. All uh, right. And uh, coming back, yeah, I think I, I think I didn't answer about regulations. Uh, 
-hmm. I think it is important for sure to have uh, the industry regulated and it is uh, very much different from regulation standpoint in different countries. Uh, and it, it also correlates uh, how regulated the certain country uh, with uh, the state of the market. So if we take, for example, uh, US as, as a country, mm -hmm. as a market, um, there are quite quite uh, strict regulations, and but at the same time, uh, there are a lot of platforms on the market. So the market is already developed in a way. There is still room for, for new players and new platforms, of course, but uh, there are successful cases, big players like Start Engine again. Um, the same happens in the UK. There are big players, there are uh, a lot of platforms uh, overall. The market is, is kind of developed, but and there is uh, quite strict reg regulated. Uh, what happens in, Euro in European Union is that uh, in every country, uh, the authorities, they have very different rules. And uh, until recently, actually uh, until uh, November 10, this year, year when uh, there will be new pan-european regulations coming into play uh, it's it, it was quite difficult to uh, operate cross-board uh, cross-border meaning that uh, if you have a platform in germany for example and you want to get investors or fundraisers uh, in uh, spain uh, that would require for you to do quite a lot of legal uh, stuff uh, in both countries what will change in uh, November, uh, you will have a way to do it uh, in the whole European Union area, European mm -hmm. economic area, let's say. Uh, and so you don't have to, if you have, if you register in one country, you will not have to uh, register again uh, in, in another country where you want to operate. Then, uh, and uh, what we see right now with the market uh, is that there, is so many, there are so many platforms in the European Union, in, in every country, uh, just because the market is so saturated. But they are very small in most cases. Um, and with new regulations, what we expect is that either some of them will merge or some will just uh, disappear uh, and new, bigger ones will, will be created. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, did um, uh, I interrupt you? <laughs> uh, no, well, what, what, what I also want and, and I can add here yeah. is uh, that in other regions like uh, MENA, for example, or Asia, um, there are no, no, well, the market is not developed and the regulations are not uh, ready in most countries, uh, but they're getting there. What we see from our own experience, our own marketing, we get uh, quite a lot of interest from uh, pretty much like from any country in the world and in, from African countries, from uh, South America, Asia, and so forth. Uh, people want to start new platforms. Uh, people want to start crowdfunding platforms there. Um, but in many cases, it's quite difficult because they don't know uh, the rules. They don't know how to do it properly. And so they don't get in trouble from legal standpoint. So it's easier in a way when there are uh, strict rules. On one, on one hand, it's uh, makes you comply with them with them uh, on the other hand it's uh, easier because people know how to play and what the limitations are okay okay cool thank you thank you for your expertise um now my question is how do you guys in lender kit you know come in all of this how you're handling of the described issues and so on mm -hmm. uh well lender kit uh, is software first of all so we um, we're not a platform ourselves uh, we provide our software to platforms and in uh, we try to be as flexible as possible uh, in the sense that uh, in any country in uh, any regulatory environment we can customize our software in that way which is uh, compliant to their unique regulations and that might in, in include uh, different integrations. So, for example, if um, speaking of KYC, for example, right? So, if, if a certain country requires uh, very specific KYC uh, rules or KYC, um, there are certain requirements which are not uh, fulfilled by default, then uh, we can 
create as many integrations as we uh, need. And also, I know that you guys at Trafty Pro are quite flexible in order to uh, adjust into certain regulations and certain uh, rules. Uh, so that also helps on your end. But from our, our perspective, we, we are in a way, uh, so we, we don't tie ourselves to a specific market. So we try to, uh, to, to be as customizable as possible. Okay. 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 Cool. Um, okay. And also another question is you know, more technological. I mean, uh, speaking of automation, you know, it's, it used to be some, you know, just process, but now it's a requirement for many industries. Uh, the automated fintech solution providers have had an impact on that. So how would you describe this impact? And has this helped you scaling up the lender kit in particular? But of, of overall, how the industry in general is, you know, reacting towards these changes? We received quite some questions while we were having these technicalities, so we will have a lot of things to discuss after we finish our <laughs> discussion. Uh, just to remind you, I was asking about the automation, uh, the the impact of it, and how did if if it helped your company scaling up and how the industry in general reacted to automating of the processes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so crowdfunding in itself, it's a digital uh, tool in a way. Uh, so it's supposed to be automated uh, in uh, most cases from by design uh, in a way. Uh, what happens in the past uh, couple of years, maybe because of pandemic, uh, I, and I think it somehow touches like every every industry uh, many processes uh, became uh, more remote than they were in a way uh, so if uh, earlier it was possible to do some due diligence offline then now preferably it should be all done online uh, and uh, of course it, it requires to create more automations more integrations and, and so forth from our perspective uh, again, this comes to flexibility and uh, also being able to integrate uh, any solution for, uh, let's say, a more automated uh, onboarding process, uh, more, uh, let's say, video chat for people to to see each other, to, to talk uh, to one another. Uh, so technology side, again, being the technology solution, it's uh, not really a problem for us, it's more like uh, an upside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. And also, we spoke a bit about pandemic already. Um, and my next question is also about that. You know, there were some big changes in the recent three years. So, could you please tell us a bit more about how everything changed uh, recently within I don't know, last few years? Mm -hmm. You mean in the industry? Okay. In the, in the industry, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's not really about pandemic, I think, but uh, it's more about the industry becoming more mature uh, because it's still uh, quite young and uh, the rules are being created as the industry goes. Uh, and uh, I think the main change from my perspective is uh, what started initially as very kind of um, a way to de democratize investments. Uh, for regular people to to be able to invest in companies directly, which wasn't uh, really possible before, um, except except public companies, right? Of course, you can you can somehow buy shares from Apple, uh, but you can't invest uh, in in regular startup unless you are an, an angel investor, or professional investor, or um, VC fund or whatever. And now you go on a platform and you you can choose uh, some company you like, some startup and and you, you put some money and get some shares. Uh, but with maturity of industry comes also uh, the kind of more professional level in a way. Uh, so it means that not just regular people participate in, in those uh, platforms, but also institutional investors. So they come, come there, they take certain kind of piece of, uh, of the market. Uh, and particularly it, it is, uh, very kind of it can, it can be seen uh, quite a lot in uh, what's called peer-to-peer -peer lending for example mm -hmm. initially this was an 
just a way to people to lend money to other people, what the name suggests, peer to peer. But many platforms they be became basically banks where there is a big institutional uh, financial organization uh, is behind the platform and it gives like unlimited amount of, well not, not unlimited of course but uh, high level of uh, funding and uh, what the what the platform does is it automates giving out loans to uh, certain certain people and so it's not peer to peer anymore it's more mm -hmm. like People, people still get money from financial institutions, but now via digital platform. Uh, so bottom line, I think what's uh, changed in the industry uh, is coming from um, more exciting like process uh, more to uh, more professional investment business. All right. All right. Uh, great. So moving forward, I think it's it's time to give you a short break because you were talking a lot. So let me tell you a bit more to you and to the audience uh, listening to us right now about Shafty Pro and solution of Shafty Pro. So we are an AI-backed global ID verification service provider, uh, AML, CFT compliance regulations for ICOs and funding platforms, especially for uh, virtual currency, pose a risk and cause problem to businesses. So. Uh, Shafti Pro has been working in a major capacity to provide global compliance solutions, especially adhering industries to KYC and AML compliance. So the, the role of an ID verification service cannot be stressed enough in this scenario. Uh, Shafti Pro provides an automated system with quick verification response. Um, you know, time is the, is the key to successful uh, online token sale or fundraiser without having to compromise comprehensive um, identity verification. So here at Shafty Pro we ensuring that the complete due diligence is done and uh, providing the, the best user experience to the customers who are to, to be verified. Um, well, um, also wanted to ask you uh, about the, the digitality, right? So uh, well, we kind of spoke about this, but once again, um, is everything done digital? How has that impacted the crowdfunding as an industry in itself? And also, um, how how has LenderKid uh, reacted to the latest changes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it all comes down to uh, what we discussed before. Uh, yeah. As as the industry is is like totally digital <laughs> uh, in a way yeah. so I, I think it, the, the main impact is uh, in how people uh, actually communicate right now uh, when previously uh, the first thing you would you would think of when you need to to do due diligence or to meet somebody uh, you take some transport and go to go to places uh, and even uh, with uh, Let's say, well, there are, as I said, there are like very different uh, types of crowdfunding, and there might be crowdfunding for real estate, for example. In that case, you need to go to uh, the actual uh, construction site, see the building, uh, see, see some process, what, what's happening there. Um, and uh, now it's not so easy, uh, at least during uh, pandemic because there are restrictions and, and so forth. So people have to find some other ways uh, to do the same, but remotely and obviously with help of uh, digital technologies. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, thank you, Constantine. Maybe uh, you are having some questions to me also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be <laughs> helpful to, to hear some questions, some answers from you as well, not just from, from me. Uh, so I have a couple. Uh, what, uh, what's interesting for me is uh, because you work with, with customers in different industries, not just in crowdfunding, but uh, in many others, uh, how, would, how would you compare crowdfunding industry uh, with other types of businesses and if you see any particular challenges with crowdfunding Yeah, Yeah, uh, well, basically every industry has their very specific requirements or, or even their tailored demands, but 
Um, here at Shakti Pro, what we are doing, we are making sure that the solutions that we provide are very much tailored to the needs of the clients, um, and our services are very industry specific. So. Um, as far as the services are concerned, the demands of the crowdfunding industry, um, they are not very much different from any other industry that requires KYC and AML services for customer onboarding. So basically, uh, the main idea here is, is to be as compliant as possible and be as tailored to the needs of the, each particular industry, I would say. So once again, the same as uh, for us, the customization yeah. and flexibility is uh, the key. Thing. Yeah, it is the key. <laughs> okay, okay. And another one I have is uh, more geographical uh, because we see a different demand for crowdfunding uh, in different regions. Uh, like I said, in uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, UK, US and so forth. Uh, how is it uh, for you guys? Do you see any growing demand for KYC services or uh, identity verification services uh, depending on the region? Like, is there a, are there any specific ones where you see the growth? Okay, so basically the, the demand for automated KYC uh, in crowdfunding industry or in any other industry uh, has increased all over the world, like I would say globally. Um, and it mostly, you know, getting back to the topic of the coronavirus and corona crisis that, you know, changed the game for, for many industries. Uh, so the, the pandemic has pushed the world to a digital forefront, which has led to uh, the situation when the, the KYC and AML is required very, very much and uh, it touches the whole world. Of course, there are some particular regions that are now developing faster like uh, as you said about africa and asia uh, etc yeah these are growing but uh you know the, the kyc and aml procedures uh have been you know very important um in european countries in the us and lots of processes for kyc and aml um started you know to be automated uh, some time ago and now this process just becoming more and more uh, of a, of a usual practice, I would say. So yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It is a very global solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, Should good. we go yeah. to the questions from chat? Yep. Sure. Sure. Let me uh, let me read some questions to you, and then we will decide whether this question is more related to your <laughs> expertise or to mine, or both of us can add something. So mm -hmm. the first question is, uh, how quickly can I verify my investor? And what are some of the other verifications I can perform using a KYC service? Uh, well, I think this is like <laughs> uh, more a question to me, uh, right? Yeah, so I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, how quickly can you verify your investor? Well, that very much depends on what exactly would you like to verify on the regulations on the country. Uh, what we are doing in Shafti Pro in particular, um, our verification takes up to one minute uh, to get the final result. And of course, uh, there is you know, some gap for you to make the final decision whether you, you trust this person, would you like to work with them. But in general, the technology that Shafti Pro provides uh, takes up to one minute for, for the whole verification process. Um, okay, I hope I asked, uh, answered your question. If, if there are some, you know, more details needed, please write down uh, in the chat section. Um, okay, with the change in KYC and M AML regulations, do you think the regulatory authorities might have put these platforms under observation also? I think this is also a question to you, Constantine. Uh, it, I think it depends on uh, how you read the question uh, <laughs> if by if by this platforms uh, the author means uh, I, i'm sure it's KYC, kyc providers well if it's about crowdfunding then for sure and they are already under observation and um, regular regulatory authorities they uh, monitor the market constantly and they also change their requirements uh, in many ways depending on what uh, what's happening on the market so for example uh, in the uk the regulator which is called fca financial mm -hmm. conduct authority uh, they uh, change 
what they do, they usually see some precedents. So they see some cases when something went wrong and they try to adjust their uh, regulations, their rules uh, accordingly. Sometimes they do it uh, well, a little bit too much. Uh, it means that for platforms, it becomes uh, too hard to continue uh, operate under those uh, rules. Uh, so there is constant dialogue between uh, businesses and regulator and and usually they come eventually to some uh, compromise in a way uh, but if it's about uh, whether kyc aml solutions should be regulated i guess it's more question to you <laughs> I don't well know. Um, they are regulated and they are very much regulated um you know they are regionally regulated and each country in particular have you know some particular set of rules what is to be verified so basically um, it is already under observation and uh, i'm sure it's not going to change in any way in the nearest future um, mm. so my answer is pretty much very similar to yours um, okay. to the next question it's a very interesting question and i would also be interesting to hear your expertise on that um, how far along is crypto to be used for crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, yeah it, it is an interesting question and i think uh, pretty much everyone who hears about cryptocurrencies blockchain uh, wants to know like if it's a use case for crowdfunding or not uh, and we also uh, ask this question to platforms uh, because uh, besides be building uh, crowdfunding platforms with our product, we also do certain market research and we publish annual reports on, um, on the state of crowdfunding industry in, in certain way from our perspective uh, with a little bit tech angle rather than just uh, overall market, market angle. And uh, this year we've um, so how we do it, we send out a survey, ask uh, some questions uh, to the platforms and then uh, publish a report based on their answers. And one of the questions we asked this year was uh, especially about blockchain. Uh, and we asked the platforms if they uh, use blockchain currently or if they uh, are going to use it in the near future or something like that. And it turns out that um, Within uh, Europe, Europe, uh, where we do the survey, only, I don't remember the exact number, but something like 3% uh, of platforms already use uh, blockchain. And the rest, they are, well, some of them they are thinking about uh, implementing it in the future. The rest uh, are not. But the, the use cases, uh, they, they are definitely there. You, you can accept crypto as a mean of payment. Uh, that's a very easy, easy way. But uh, also there are uh, things like asset tokenization, for example, uh, which allows you to basically digitize shares. So instead of getting sh getting shares in the form of written contracts uh, or, and having a custodian uh, for that, you can uh, basically get digital representation of, of uh, shares, which is a coin in a way on, on the blockchain. Mm, we see that there is uh, definitely interest for that. Uh, there are things like mm, not ICO, but uh, initial security uh, offerings happening, which are very similar to crowdfunding. So there is definitely space for blockchain uh, in the future in the industry. But so far, it's still the minority of platforms uh, who actually use it in a meaningful oh, okay. way. Okay, but what do you think there is some potential for, for cryptocurrencies uh, in yeah, the sure. industry? Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, moving forward, um, next question is, what if my investor denies KYT? Constantine, uh, have you ever faced these situations and how that is it handled in, in the industry? I, uh, I'm not totally sure like what denying KYC means uh, if they going through the procedure like if they don't want to go through KYC procedure 
Well, it's it's up to them if they want to sign up for the platform or not. And if KYC is a requirement, they will just not be accepted into the platform, I guess. Uh, maybe in some cases there might be some ex exceptions, uh, but I haven't heard about such cases to be honest. Yeah, I, I, th I think I think if KYC is a part of regulations, especially then platforms are just not allowed to uh, ignore it. Yeah, if it is if it is regulated, of course there is like no room for you no know, exceptions. Mostly, mm -hmm. uh, never heard about exceptions also. Um, okay, Kevin asks us: Will KYC be performed at the initial interaction or during funding stage? It really depends on a specific platform. Some platforms uh, they want to know. Uh, everything from the very beginning. So the moment you uh, click sign up, uh, you fill uh, fill in a lot of information about yourself, and also you go through uh, full KYC procedure. So the platform knows for sure that uh, you you are the person you are um, pretending to be in a way. And only after that uh, they will even disclose the details of their offerings or. Uh, any any kind of sensitive information uh, to only verified users some other platforms which are and i think that applies uh, more to more social oriented uh, platforms or the nation platforms where the goal is to have as many uh, interactions uh, with with platform as possible uh, they only collect basic details in the beginning, so they even allow you to sign up with Facebook, for example, uh, mm -hmm. as, as, as the first step. Mm, so you don't go through any actual KYC procedure. And only when you uh, reach the stage where you put some money in and you want to invest into certain offering, uh, at that stage they will do uh, due diligence and they will do KYC uh, procedure with you. So you don't okay. have to be verified before in, the, in those cases. Mm -hmm. So, but it depends on the platform. But uh, does the geography matter in this regard, or it only it's only up to the you know the platform itself? The flow. I think it's it's both. So first of all, it's uh, the platform business model might might matter, mm -hmm. and their uh, strategy in a way, but also. It, it could be that in some countries, depending on their regulations, uh, it's just not allowed to uh, disclose financial or sensitive information about the offering without verifying who you are disclosing it to. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Um, the next question is, um, do you provide credit debit card verification service? If yes, then is this enough? I think it's more more to me like, like this mm -hmm. question. Um, well, uh, yes, we do provide credit debit card verification. We have PCI DSS certification for that. Um, to the question, if then is this enough? Uh, this very much depends on, on on many factors. First of all, on the industry. Uh, like we are talking mostly about crowdfunding, but I'm not sure if uh, you, Catherine, asking about crowdfunding or in general KYC. Um, Second of all, it depends on your risk appetites. Uh, what exactly would you like to know uh, on the on the regulators, on the geography of the you know the person you are uh, verifying? Um, well, what I'm offering uh, and to answer your question, you know, in more detail, uh, uh, you can see by the way on this slide our contact details where you can contact us, ask your additional questions, or you know describe the situation in a less generic way and more details so we can you know give you more detailed expertise but generally uh, yes we do provide the card verification uh, if this is enough or not very much depends on uh, what exactly um, you are trying to do and to be compliant with um, and i hope <laughs> this answers your question right now um, interesting question here um, being an investor uh, does kyc benefits me also constantin do you have an expertise on that <laughs> uh, well i definitely have an answer i'm not sure if it's <laughs> expertise yeah. or not uh, so i think the main benefit for an investor is uh, investor is allowed to do uh, things on the platform that's the main benefit of kyc of course uh, in some um, 
purely from user experience perspective, you don't want to go through additional steps. You want to uh, do as many as little steps as possible, uh, and then have an invest button, put your money in, and uh, and go. But well, unfortunately, uh, the world is not so 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 easy in many cases. And if you go to a bank, they will also not open your uh, an account without uh, verifying something about you. And uh, there is well, there is no good solution uh, on both sides of the spectrum. There are things. So if if, if something is too easy, then it uh, adds too much room for scams uh, or for inappropriate usage of technology. If it's too complicated, then it just becomes uh, too difficult to to invest. And uh, so all this it's about finding balance balance between uh, those two yeah yeah I, I agree and also uh a good part of all of that you know i think uh, the whole world moves towards the direction of transparency and honesty and in this regard being transparent and open you know um and if you explain you know uh, to the investor why kyc procedure is important why why does this have to happen i think there is um not such a, it's not such a big deal you know after all uh to go through plain email chip or quick uh kyc procedure yeah what i also uh, want to add here is uh there is kind of an industry problem uh with that which i hope might be solved uh, at some point uh the problem is that if you if you are only investing on uh, one platform, let's say on CrowdCube, uh, you go through this KYC process only once, and then you you have your account verified, and then you do uh, you can do multiple investments over time, uh, and it's quite smooth. But if you want to diversify your portfolio in, as, a, as an investor, and you want to invest uh, s some amount on one platform, then some other amount on the other platform, uh, or the third platform, and so forth. You have to go through KYC over and over again on every platform, and it is very different on, on, on different platforms. So for for an investor who wants to invest not millions, but I don't know, 100 euros uh, on one platform, 100 euros on uh, other platform and so forth, it becomes uh, too time consuming overall. Mm -hmm. What would what would potentially help having some kind of unified system where you verify your details and go through KYC procedure once and then you invest in multiple platforms but the industry is not is not there yet yeah, yeah. so you mean uh, like a creation of some let's say a database right for, for yeah so basically uh, like unified uh, account which which yeah. is accepted by multiple platforms mm -hmm. oh that's quite an idea yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. that's that's a real problem for the industry, which uh, is which potentially can be solved by someone. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, another question: um, Is there any regulation that requires business verification of investors? Mm. Yeah, I think. Well, it's not it's not really about regulation; it's more about business models, uh, because. At least what we call in uh, call crowdfunding, it's a very wide term. So it's not only it's not just about retail investors where people invest uh, into startups, for example. Um, there might be quite uh, different business models, and in some cases there will be institutional investors uh, investing on the platform on behalf of the organizations. And in that case, uh, it's it's no longer about KYC; it's more about KYB. So mm -hmm. it's verification of the business uh, who, which invests uh, into into certain opportunities. So yes, in that in that case, um, and regulations, I guess, also uh, require those verifications for business. Yep, yep. Uh, business verification and AML check of a business entity, uh, depending on the business model, can can be important for for crowdfunding industry. I also agree with that. Um, okay, that was the last question so far. Um, let's uh, give a few more minutes for, for the audience to ask some additional questions if there are. Uh, just reminding you that on the main screen uh, there are our contact details. 
uh, also the recording of the webinar will be sent to you guys and the whole recording will be also published on our YouTube channel so if there is something else uh, you can either watch a video again or contact us uh, via our emails. Um, see no questions so far um, so I think that's the moment for us to, to finish our discussion uh, thank you very much Constantine for very interesting discussion and the expertise you provided it was very valuable yeah thank you very much for, for hosting the webinar asking the questions and I hope this was useful <laughs> not just for us but for the, for the yeah. audience, uh, for the audience well. too. thank you audience too uh, for listening to us and uh, hope to talk you to you guys more thank you thank you Shufti Pro. True identity builds trust.